What's going on, guys? Krusty K's here from the Gold Boys Network, coming to you with Week 10 of college football. Uh, we're going to break down the Tuesday-Wednesday games here, same as every other week, then Thursday-Friday. Uh, maybe we'll have a Saturday video this week. I don't know. The last two Saturday or last two Friday nights have just been way too busy, so I haven't been able to get a Saturday video out. But we're going to at least kick it off the right way and go through these Tuesday and Wednesday games. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. The first one on the Tuesday slate... New Mexico taking on FIU. Uh, FIU, in the last game, uh, played a tight one with Sam Houston. Uh, arguably played better than Sam Houston. I mean, they're, they're Keon Jenkins, uh, I feel like he took a pretty big step back in this game. He ended up getting benched. Um, I'm assuming he's going to start here, but I'm not, I, have actually, I haven't seen anything to confirm that yet. Uh, but anyway, this, this spread is uh, FIU minus 9.5, which... Uh, if you've watched Conference USA, if you know anything about Conference USA, uh, there really is no like clear cut. This is the best team in the conference, you know, by margin. Um, it's a lot of mediocrity. It's a lot of sloppy football. It's a lot of bad football. And so for me here, I like New Mexico State plus the nine and a half. I mean, obviously they're another team that's definitely been disappointing. Uh, same record as FIU, sitting at two and six. But you look at this New Mexico State team, and they've done a couple things. I say well very loosely um but they do they do run the ball pretty well close to five yards a carry which i think will play well against this fiu defense who's 110th in opposing opponent line yards 110th in opponent rushing success and i believe 125th in havoc so it's a really good spot for the new mexico state run game to kind of get their groove which should help this new mexico state offense just be a little bit more consistent um total for this game sitting at 43 and a half when I see a total that low, and I know and I've watched these teams uh, quite a bit, uh, I just have a hard time seeing where FIU puts together consistent drives, consistent points to, to cover this number. I'm playing Mexico State not only because I do think that, that they potentially could win this game outright. Um, I just think that this is a team, they're going to run the ball, they're going to control the clock, they're going to have success running the ball. And ultimately, I think that keeps them in this game. I just think this number is way too big. Um, I think I saw it at, I want to say, 7. Uh, this morning and it's gotten up to nine and a half now and i just i'll, I'll gladly fade that steam um there's no injuries or anything to report nothing nothing like that i mean even if it was uh either new mexico state quarterback is pretty bad so uh, i just i'm not i'm not buying i'm not jumping down the steam i'm not chasing the steam i will gladly fade this steam give me new Mac new mexico state plus nine and a half wait before we get back to the picks i wanted to thank you all for watching Woo! friends don't let friends watch videos without hitting the like button. So go ahead and press the thumbs up button and like the video. If you're new here and not subscribed, you should go ahead and do so because we're dropping new content each and every day on the Gold Boys Network. We strive to cover every sport and give out picks and analysis and valuable information for free on the Gold Boys Network. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell so you can get notified when we drop something new. I'm Brad Thomas. Let's get back to the picks. Our next one, uh, Louisiana taking on Texas State. Uh, so you get a little Sun Belt action here on a Tuesday night. Uh, definitely one of my favorite conferences to watch and bet on. Uh, pretty exciting offenses across the board here. Uh, this game, no different. Texas State, probably the second best offense in the Sun Belt. And I'd say Louisiana is probably top five as well. Um, for me here, though, it's going to be Texas State. Um, I actually gave out their money line officially. It was my Twitter free play. It was like one of the first plays I posted in Gold Boys for this uh, midweek action. I like Texas State to pick up a win here. They're, I'm gonna call it must-win territory. They're four and three. Uh, they dropped a game to ODU before their like little, like a, I wouldn't call it like a true buy, but they have like 10 days rest. And this is a must-win. They have to win this game. Uh, the defense has played pretty well overall. Uh, offense, Jordan McLeod has looked really good up until the ODU game. It was his worst game of the season. And I just like him to bounce back. You're gonna see a Louisiana team who, while they can put up points, the defense has been pretty abysmal. Um, they're bottom 30 in EPA per rush allowed, and I want to say bottom 40 in EPA, EPA per dropback. So definitely not a good defense. Definitely a spot where McLeod and Madi can kind of get it going. And I really think this Texas State offense, especially at home, uh, really shines in this one. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if the game is a bit of a, high, a higher scoring affair. Uh, like I said, kind of like a shootout. I like both these offenses a lot. I just think when it comes down to it, uh, Woldridge for Louisiana, he's played borderline perfect football and really just hasn't, face much resistance and I think that playing this Texas State defense who 
has been underwhelming at times. You look at some of the numbers, and they're top 25 in a potent completion percentage per game, which that'll be the best defense that he's seen by margin uh, probably all season, truthfully. And I think just that little bit of resistance, that little bit of a, a, a more solid defense gets Woldred off his rhythm, and ultimately um, he'll look more like the Woldred we saw last year, which if you watched him last year, um, didn't look anywhere near as good as he's looked this year. So I think we see a bit of the old Woldridge here against a stingier Texas State defense. Give me Texas State on the money line. Uh, this next one this is the third Tuesday game here. Uh, Louisiana Tech taking on Sam Houston State. Sam Houston State coming off of that 10-7 um, win over FIU where they had Jace Bauer at quarterback. The offense just looked absolutely terrible. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they are supposed to be in their quarterback back for this one. Hunter Watson um, is expected to play here, which is huge for them, obviously. Uh, I like Sam Houston here. I don't know if I'm going to lay the number necessarily. Uh, it's at 10.5, but I do lean that way. So for the for the video's purposes, I will give out Sam Houston minus 10.5. Uh, I just think this is one of those ones where Louisiana Tech, if you've watched them, uh, Bullock has looked better at quarterback than Turner did, but... Uh, he makes a lot of bad decisions. A lot of times he kind of just, I feel like he goes through his progressions and he panics and then he just like either takes a sack or throws it away. Um, and if you've watched them, you know what I'm talking about. There's just a lot of plays where it feels like he just gives up really quick on the play. And against the Sam Houston defense, who's going to get a lot of pressure. Uh, I could see him totally folding here. And I think that uh, this low total kind of reflects that. I think it's low because it's going to be pretty one-sided. Um, so give me Sam Houston minus 10 and a half. Like I said, Hunter Watson being back is huge for this offense. Uh, if you watched last week against FIU, uh, couldn't really run the ball. And I think a lot of it was because Jace Bauer, uh, the arm threat is really not there. Hunter Watson, yeah, he's going to run. He's going to use his legs. But the arm talent is a lot better than Jace Bauer. Ultimately opens up this offense a lot more. And really think we see a ton of success from a team that's been rather stagnant the last couple weeks. Um, pretty much since Watson got hurt, truthfully. Hey, guys, I just want to give a quick reminder that new users can bet $5 at FanDuel on any of the bets in this video and win $150 in bonus bets if the bet wins. Now let's get back to the bets. Uh, moving on to Wednesday, we have two games here on Wednesday. So the first one, big one, uh, really excited about this game. Jacksonville State traveling to Liberty. Uh, Liberty coming off the outright loss to Kennesaw State. So this is an interesting spot because Jacksonville State, their defense, um, definitely not good. Liberty defense, definitely not good. <laughs> uh, I do lean the over, and that's definitely a spot where I'd be looking to go. But uh, for me here, I'm just gonna take Liberty on the money line. Uh, minus 125 on FanDuel as I'm recording this. Uh, I, I like this spot for Liberty. Um, this is a team that I, I honestly uh, was not high on um, coming into the season. Kind of had that, you know, proven correct, I guess. Um, just watching this team play this season. They really haven't had a comfortable win per se. Uh, they've been double digit favorites a handful of times and I don't think they've covered once yet. Um, so this is definitely a team that, a bit underwhelming, definitely, uh, and yeah, the public perception of Liberty is, you know, this high-powered offense. And they do have that to an extent. It just hasn't been as efficient. Caden Salter hasn't looked nearly as good as he did last year. But this just feels like a great spot, as good a spot as any, to kind of get that going here. You're a Jacksonville State defense who I believe in both pass and against the uh, rush are, like, bottom 25 in EPA. Um, against the pass in particular, 125th in yards per completion allowed. So they're allowing a ton of big plays through the air. And with the way these running backs are for Liberty, I do believe they will obviously run the ball. It's what they do best. But you're going to see play action get set up, and you're going to see guys like uh, Sibley, who's been relatively quiet over the last uh, two, three weeks. I think he has a big game. I think he kind of breaks out of this little funk he's been in. I just want to say the first three weeks of the season, he had like 70-plus yards in all three games. And then over the last three games, he's like at 50 yards or under 50 yards total for the three games. So this just feels like a really good spot for him to kind of break out of that funk. feels like a spot where Salter... You know, maybe gets it going. Um, if you're watching him play, he's, he I don't know if he's just not interested or what it's been, um, but against these, like, lesser opponents, he just really hasn't seemed as locked in, per se. I mean, and that could very well be it. He just does, isn't motivated. He doesn't get up for those kind of games. And I want to say I remember vaguely, I don't. I want to say it was Liberty uh, last year where their head coach said that they have a hard time getting up for games like this, like like those previous games against these, like, lesser opponents, so like Kennesaw, uh, Middle Tennessee, teams like that. So in this one, Jacksonville State, uh, while the record isn't as good as Liberty, uh, it's a bit misleading. This team is a high scoring offense. And if Liberty comes into this game flat, they will get punched in the mouth. Um, so I do like them to get up for this game, especially off the Kennesaw State loss. You can't lose back to back games in this conference, especially for a team who was, you know, one of the projected potential uh, playoff spots out of the group five. So 
Um, give me Liberty on the money line. Give me that Salter, much needed bounce back. Uh, I just think that in terms of defense here, you get two defenses, like I said, who aren't playing well. But in the big scheme of things, I really think Liberty's defense, probably the better of the two units. And I think when it, you know, when it all comes down to it, they will get us the stop we need to get this win. So Liberty on the money line. The last one, Kennesaw State traveling to Western Kentucky. Uh, Western Kentucky, uh, probably my favorite team in this conference. Been playing really well. We backed them against Sam Houston, got uh, rewarded. Uh, they won that game. Now they're off a bye, taking on Kennesaw State, coming off that huge win over Liberty. Uh, this is a spot where normally I would just fade them into oblivion. Uh, really tough to get there, though, at this 24 and a half. This is a huge number. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the under 50 and a half. Uh, what I'm looking at here, Kennesaw State, uh, bottom five in tempo. So that, obviously, we all know that they really grind these games out. Um, if you watch them against Liberty, they hit a lot of play action. Um, quite a few deep balls, actually. It was kind of funny. Uh, and then we play Western Kentucky. Um, their defense actually has played really well. And coming off the bye, I, I'm not as worried about them maybe like not like being sleepy in this spot because I've already had the extra time off. So I like their defense. Their defense has been playing pretty well, um, in particular against the pass. So I really like them to kind of shut down that Kennesaw State passing attack, which, I mean, I'm not, I'm not buying it's for real after the one week. But, I mean, hey, if it is, I think the Western Kentucky defense can shut it down. And on the other side, Kennesaw State defensively, I mean, they're not great, but Western Kentucky this year, um, obviously they still throw the ball quite a bit. They are running it a bit more than usual. But uh, if you've watched them, uh, they don't throw a ton of deep balls other than like when they throw like their shot plays. A lot of it is like dink and dunk, um, you know, whereas in years past, it was like you watched uh, Bailey Zappi, who would, you know, it'd be like, you know, 80 yards in 35 seconds. Um, this year, it's a lot of screen passes. It's a lot of like over the middle, like 10, 15 yards, like that moderate uh, depth type stuff. So their drives just take a bit longer. And this Kennesaw State defense, uh, probably the the better part of this uh, defense is the secondary. I do think they hold Western Kentucky, at least slow them down. Like I said, under 50 and a half. I uh, wouldn't be surprised this game's like 30 to 10. Uh, that's kind of what I see here, which obviously wouldn't be great for Kennesaw State, but it keeps us under. Giving the under 50 and a half here. Uh, that does include the Tuesday, Wednesday slate. So as always, um, let's keep making money. Let's keep cashing. I believe last week, Tuesday, Wednesday did not go well for us, but we ended up bouncing back and we had a nice Friday, Saturday. So let's hope that we can turn around, get this whole week greened out. Um, as always, you can get all my official plays at goldboys.com. If you have a gambling problem, don't want to hurt a gambler. Thank you, guys.